slow a little different spot this is my little wood shop per se it's where i build a lot of my speaker boxes in and outdoor furniture really anything a um, little update before we get started today if you're watching this video and hadn't seen a dino date post it's because it got moved I ordered that field system. If you guys remember, if you watched that last video, I was waiting on the field rails to come in. They didn't come in. So I had to call and reschedule the dyno appointment. So now it's February 4th. Um, I'm hoping I get in sooner, but I still, even if they called me tomorrow and said, can you come now or something, I still don't have the rails. I really don't know when they're gonna come in. Um, there's a, a mess up at, uh, at uh, Lethal Performance. I'm not bashing that company by any means. Um, things happen. So it is what it is. So um, I'm just you know patiently waiting for them to come in. And whenever they, uh, they get here, they get here. And I'll um, install everything. I'm gonna still make a video on that. I haven't installed none of it yet. So whenever I, I get everything in, then I'll start the install because as of right now the car runs if I take it all apart to do that then it won't run so um, after I I get all that stuff in I'll um, I'll do an install video then um, but today is gonna be a little different today we're gonna do uh, some car audio so I'm going to um, set the phone up and do like a little unboxing show you guys what I got and tell you what's going in Hey guys, I'm going to do a little unboxing to show you guys what I am installing. All this is going in a, I believe it's a 2013 Mustang GT California Special. Um, so we got a 4 gauge 2 channel wiring kit. All this stuff came from Sonic Electronics. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This, that's just where I usually buy most of my car audio. It's just a good site always hassle free never have any issues so it's just who I use and always have good deals and sales going on um, but that's where all this stuff can be found at this is a uh, I think it's you know, 1200 watt but anyway it's a 4 gauge 2 channel amp wiring kit so it's going to come with power wire ground wire your RCA's your fuse, your, your inline fuse link, um, your remote wire, things like that. It's pretty standard. Anytime you do a car audio system, that you have to have a <clears throat> power wire, ground wire, remote, and RCAs. The amp I, I chose to go with is a Planet Audio PL4000 1D, meaning it's a mono block, uh, one channel amp. Um, I use Planet Audio quite often on a lot of builds um, it's a fairly cheap uh, company and um, I don't have ever have any issues with them um, I've actually used them for several years and I have a whole bunch of them out there still on a uh, past build and nobody's got any issues whatsoever <coughs> um, so you know when you're if you looking to do your own system don't be um, don't frown away from them because of the price because I mean this amp says 4,000 max watts, but really I think at one ohm it does 2,000 watts and that's good I, I mean for the money that these amps cost that's that's a good wattage um, I don't have like an amp dyno or anything like that to actually verify it, but um, even if it you're even if you're getting 1500 watts at one ohm for the money that these amps cost that's, that's still a pretty good bargain um, never had any issues with overheating or anything out of them, so um they're, they're just a good budget amp. Um, you're not going to break the bank on it and you're going to get um, pretty good quality sound out of them. <clears throat> the subs I decided to go with, one of them is holding the phone up so I can hear the video right now, is Massive Audio. 
Um, it's a company I've been watching for a while. Um, I've been wanting to uh, try out their subs. Um, when this customer came to me, he pretty much told me what he wanted. He said, you get, you pick the stuff, you buy the stuff, you build the box and uh, make it sound good. So that's what I'm doing. I matched the, these up. These are um, GTX 10, or 104s. They are 700 watt RMS a piece. There's going to be two. Um, they're, they're, they have extremely good stats. They're dual 4 ohm. So once I bridge them down around in series, I'm going to hopefully be about 2 ohms each, which I think this amp's like 1,000 watts at 2 ohms. Um, so, anyways, the company I followed for a while, I've been watching them, watch, watching them grow. And um, I'm not sure if they're a fairly new company or not, but they just fairly crossed my radar. And uh, for the, like I said, for the price, um, 700 RMS um, is is pretty good. I mean, they're a little over 100 bucks a piece, and uh, I mean, they're really nice subs. I'll go ahead and pop this open the amp. I mean, you can pretty much see what it looks like from the box. It's an amp, the top of it lights up blue where it says Planet Audio, that their Planet Audio emblem lights up blue and um, the sides of it, um, the sides of the amp here have a blue light that lights up as well. Um, pretty, pretty nice. Um, I'll show you what the, the subs look like though because there's no picture on the box. So. Um, it comes with your um, basically your your sheet of all the specifications um, has all their series of subs on here and then a warranty card pretty good mass to these um, that's what the cone looks like massive audio Magnet on um, it looks it, it appears to be I don't want to It's a pretty solid piece of rubber um, Usually I pull those off and see how many pieces the magnet is um, but from from Feeling it. I think it's uh, I think it's a solid one-piece magnet um, paper style cone nice big um, Connectors on each side. So it's dual dual coil uh, I mean it's it, they look really good. I mean, especially for what you're paying, they, they look really good. Got good venting on them. Um, so it's a really, a really nice looking sub. Um, time will tell. I plan to have the, the box built tonight. Uh, so I can carpet it tomorrow. Give it time for all the glue and stuff to dry. Um, I'm gonna film a little bit of it. I don't. I wish I. As small as it looks in the camera, is as small as it is. I think it's maybe six foot, you know, width and 12, 15 foot long. Uh, maybe like seven, eight foot width. Um, but either way, it's, it's just a small, small little shed. So I do most of my cutting outside on a table saw. And, um, I'll try to set up um, my, I got a GoPro from a subscriber. And it's just uh, it's in a case, so it doesn't get really good audio, and it cannot come out of the case, or at least I've not figured out how to get it out of the case. Um, so I'll probably just post that up somewhere and just get video off of it, and just um, put music over it or something. Um, but yeah, so that's that's all this stuff. I'm gonna go get some measurements in the trunk so I can make my bottom board. That's where you start every box, uh, especially a trunk build. They they wanted it custom fitted so it doesn't move around. Um, you start with the bot, the base, and then you work from there. So um, I'm going to move the car underneath the carport, and I'll get some video shot of what you need to measure to start out there. Um, all right. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. As you can tell, it got late, and um, buddies came over, just started talking, but I just cut the bottom board. The Mustang trunks are have a hump back there, so you're gonna build off that hump. If you look, it wraps around those corners there, so it slides in from the back seat area. <clears throat> so it'll slide in and lock into place when the back seats are folded up and locked into place. 
So now what you need to do is you need to hold down on the back like that and then measure from there to the very top up there because that's as tall as you can make the box since it's going to get loaded in through the back. The reason I do that on these Mustangs is because <clears throat> everybody's racing these and taking them to the track and stuff. And uh, so by me doing that, when he goes and launches this car or drifts or whatever he's going to do with it, it doesn't slide all the way to the back and mess up things like unplug amps or puncture speakers if he's got other stuff thrown in the trunk or what have you. So that's the reason I do it. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure those sides and I'm going to get that angle that I need for that backboard because it can't be straight because when your seats fold up you have an angle back there. Let me fold one of these seats up. You see what I'm talking about? So it's, it's got to follow that angle right there with the back of the seat. So I'm going to get the height. I'm going to get that height and find that angle and cut those sideboards. And then I'll cut the top. And then start on the front. I'll try to keep you guys a little bit more posted, but really ain't got too far anyway, so that's what I got as of right now. Okay guys, still at it in the shop. There it is, coming together right there. Right now, cutting the circles for the sub holes. Um, I'll turn the camera around real quick and show you how it's coming along. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. It's pretty chilly tonight. This will be the front of the box. <clears throat> These are just chilling in there right now. They'll come out. It's going to be ported through the front. And the subs will be here and here. It's going to be single port, dual sub. It's about, um, I think, a cube and a half of airspace per box, per side. Um, this is the back. And this is the front. Right now I'm cutting my, I just started cutting my, my circles out for the subset. This is just like a little junk piece of wood that I got a long time ago and that's my 10 inch sub hole and then that will be the beauty ring hole that I just screwed the router to and put a nail in the middle dead center so the board will be cut here for the port so this will be one board and then this will be the other board and this piece right here is trash <clears throat> but just while well, the piece is bigger it's easier to go ahead and cut your circles for the front of the box. So I'm gonna get that done. That's where I do all my table saw work. Pretty good pile of sawdust ready. <clears throat> I'm gonna get back at that. <clears throat> I'll probably set up that GoPro somewhere just so I can do whatever with that video. I might not even use it, we'll find out. But yep, we get back at it. It's getting still pretty late. I think it's a, um, I think it's like 10.30ish. But I'd like to get this box fully assembled. All I got left is to cut these out and then the top. And the top's already cut. It's sitting on top right there. Just needs to be trimmed up. But yep, that's it, guys. I'm going to set up that GoPro. And uh, I got to find where I put it first, I guess. And uh, get some of my other shots.
got the GoPro going. But I got one of them cut out. When you're doing this with a router, you want to leave a little tab when you're cutting it out. <clears throat> you can just cut that off with like a jigsaw so this doesn't flop around and go all crazy on you. But there's one cut out. I'm going to test fit the sub. As long as my measurements are right, I'm going to cut that one. Just want to give you guys a little update because that GoPro right there that I was given. Um, when I did some tests with it, you can't really hear it because the case that's on it. And I don't think you can take the case off. So, I'll just keep doing it this way. They're, they're cut but not without issue <clears throat> remove the sub if you look see how the one on the right is slightly bigger because I mismeasured that one so that one's slightly too small this one's good it fits a nice snug fit like you want and I know it overhangs but it's because of how the box is built it'll still have somewhere to mount it's a tight fit but this one right here it don't go up over it stops on these hangs up on the terminals but I have a solution those are two pieces remember they're gonna cut like this is one side of the box and this is the other because the port goes here. So when I cut them up, I'm going to put the router back in the table. And I'm going to flush trim this one to this one with the flush trim bit, which looks like that right there. It's a flush trim bit. It's got bearing on top, so it'll follow this one and make it exactly the same on that one. Problem solved. Just want to give you guys a little update. I'm going to get to it. Well, I still got some time.
just to give you a little idea. Try to get far enough back in my little shop. So the top board will seal up here and then there'll be one more board. That board right there goes back here to and that line right there. That'll finish that groove and then this colored in area is the port. So now I'm gonna do some sanding. So you see, none of it's together, it's just chilling. I'm gonna do some sanding, round over these edges, make the airflow a little better, round over these edges right here, on each side of here, and these ones, and make the airflow a little better inside that box. So back. It's coming together. I thought I uh, filmed it, but I forgot to push film on the uh, GoPro, but I rounded off all of those edges just with some sandpaper. Helps that air come in. Or go out, or rather, on both of them. They're both round now. So now I'm going to start assembling. Um, all the boards are already cut except the top will need to be trimmed and then uh, this box will be done. Okay guys, new day. It's about like 9 in the morning. I don't. I think I shut, shut down at like 1 in the morning last night. Or This is what it is. Going to seal up all of the inside with some silicone and um, going to build the front. Um, it's like a strength board, I guess. Um, it's just going to be another board that goes over the whole front of this. It's going to flush them out the subs but also add a lot of strength to the box and we'll talk more about that here shortly just want to give you guys a little update of what it's looking like kept the clamps on it overnight because since it is cold the wood or the glue takes forever to dry so but yeah let me see how the ports work just coming together There you go. First test fit. See, it's pretty tight. Goes all the way to the top. Don't go anywhere. The seat is what locks it in. So when the seat's folded up. It locks it on the, on the sides there. There'll still be a, uh, a beauty board that goes across here to make it look seamless. I mean, it's, you ain't moving it. It's there. So, that's how it looks. Now that I know it fits, I'm gonna pull it out, make that uh, front board, and start putting it together. As you guys can see, I am covered in sawdust, head to toe. But, <clears throat> there she is. The box is complete. Just the box part is. All of the tens are uh, flush mounted. Got a nice round over edge on all the base points. Came out pretty good. <clears throat> so now all I gotta do is build the false wall and wire it up. And that's it. The false wall is just gonna have like a design that um, wraps, probably it's just gonna wrap around the, 
the Thames and the port. And then the box will be carpeted like charcoal and the false wall will be black. So to give it a nice two tone effect. Um, so what the guy wanted, that's what I'm doing. It'll match the, the car quite well though. But yep, there's the box. Okay guys, now we're done. I know I didn't show all of it, but I think I showed enough. The amp is mounted up top right there in that cutout. But that's it. I'm actually at my buddy's house with the other one I did. So we'll go in here and look at it real quick. This was the last one I did before this one. This trunk's a lot cleaner than the other one. And that's the other one. And his amp is underneath in a spare tire hole. But all right guys, that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Sorry I didn't show a whole lot. Uh, hopefully I will show more on the next builds. Um, I just trying to get this one knocked out. I got a couple more builds coming up that I got to get ready for. But again, guys, thank you for watching. There's Brittany. Hey. Thank you for watching. Till next time. Loud but slow. Out. Bye.